as well, so. Lara and her mum, Lauren, have brought an unusual patient into the Bondi Clinic. We're here today to uh, see uh, about our pygmy bearded dragon. I think it's got a little bit of tail rot and we're not sure. We just want to make sure she's not going to rot away. I'm hoping that Dr Chris can find out what's wrong with her and give her medicine. Hello. How are you going? That's Zaza. Yes. Yeah, come on through. When I first see my next patient, it's not attached to a lead or in any sort of cage. It's in a small box. This one's going to be different. What's in the box? A bearded dragon. Oh, wow. So how old is she? Three months old. OK. And her name's Zaza. Zaza. And you're worried about this tail, are you? It's the tail. It's quite long and then a little bit falls off and a little bit more. and yeah. I'm not sure if it's going to just keep going. So Zaza's downsizing? Yeah. When you don't really want it to? No. When I first see all of Zaza, something's not quite right. Normally with bearded dragons, their tail is as long as their body. For Zaza, it's a lot shorter. The last centimetre or so is dark and looks like it's about to drop off. Have you got any ideas about what might be happening to the tail? Tail right. Tail right, yeah. That's all. So basically what happens is, what, every few weeks it starts to blacken off and then bits mm -hmm. drop off. Mm. So you must be a little bit concerned about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She doesn't just completely disappear. Yeah. She's going to run out of tail soon. No matter whether you're a dog, cat, bird, human or a bearded dragon, if something turns black, it's not a good sign. For Zaza's tail to shorten up so dramatically, all of a sudden we're looking at something that's not quite normal. What's this? Not food. Not food. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Ray and Tracy are not very happy with five-year-old Angus. Stupid, stupid, stupid. This free toy has now landed us here and will probably cost us a fair bit. The cheeky Border Collie Cross has been rushed into the emergency hospital after swallowing a soft toy. And what has he done? He swallowed one of them. Something oh, very similar to that. that. Angus, excuse me, buddy, what have you done? Tracy and Ray tell me that Angus has a friend called Pet Pet. He's the pet's pet and Angus carries him around. They are normally as close as can be. But today, the relationship was under a little bit of strain because Angus decided to eat his best mate. Yeah, we're just concerned that uh, if he does have a bowel blockage that he won't be able to get his uh, epileptic medication. Turns out Angus also suffers from severe epilepsy and needs to be medicated twice a day to control his seizures. Two, four, seven o'clock. Well, we better get you sorted before seven o'clock tonight, huh, bud? What do you think? Angus's owners are really worried about him missing his seizure medications, but in reality, I'm more worried about the toy being stuck there. We can always give him his anti-seizure medications by injection, but if he's got a toy stuck in his guts, we're gonna have to pull it out with an endoscopy or even surgery. So basically what happens is, what, every few weeks, it starts to blacken off and then bits mm -hmm. drop off? Mm. and that's happening on a cycle. Yeah. Chris is trying to work out why Zaza's tail is getting dangerously short. The thing about bearded dragons, unlike some lizards, mm. they can't just drop their tail and grow a new one. Yeah. So this is sort of the stumpy look for life. Yeah. So have you got a few pets at home? Yeah. What have you got? Fish, hermit crabs, dogs and them. Wow. Lara's not your typical 11-year-old. 
For starters, she has 28 pets. Her favourites are dogs and bearded dragons. Clearly, Zaza means the world to her. And the fact that she's so small and at the moment so fragile, you can see she's concerned. All right, let's have a look at you. Yeah, it's sore. Obviously the tail is the area of most concern with Zaza, and as I work my fingers all the way down, it, it's fine until I get to the tip, and all of a sudden, she lets me know that area is not to be touched. All right, let me have a little, let me have a little listen. And it's gonna be a little listen, trust me. It is a very little listen. It's not much to listen to. Is it funny that the stethoscope's bigger than she is? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not only can I hear a heart and the fact that it's beating incredibly rapidly, but also very clearly, I can also hear a breathing. And those two things are crucial in such a small patient. All right, so it doesn't look like there are any other sore spots on her body. Mm. Now she moves around quite freely yeah. and quite comfortably. Yeah, she yeah. seems normal apart from that. So she's getting by, but she's not exactly thriving. Yeah, I mean, she's not. Well, 95% of her is great. Yeah. It's just this 5% here mm. that isn't so good. Yeah. So we need to work out what's happening in this 5%. Yeah. And so she's in with another bearded dragon. One. Yeah. How much bigger is the well, other? It's getting bigger now. I mean, it's still a baby, but... It's not it... that big. It's about mm. that big with its tail. It's, it's or another bigger. half her size, would you say? Yeah. Zaza shares an enclosure with Rosa, another bearded dragon about a month older, but quite a lot larger than Zaza. Do you think the other one might be bullying? Oh, look, it, it's, yeah, it's a good question. You don't see it. It's not like they hiss scratch. Yeah. The fact that Zaza shares her tank with another bit of dragon, Rosa, it immediately rings alarm bells. We could be looking at fight wounds here. All right, buddy, well, let's take a look at you. Hey, you're a good boy. You've been to the vets lots of times, haven't you? Too many. That's right. At Sash, Lisa is examining Angus. The five-year-old has swallowed a soft toy and Lisa is worried that it could be lodged in his esophagus. He actually looks pretty normal and that's because his owners have really been on the ball and brought him in as soon as they noticed that there was anything wrong, which means that at the moment it's probably not causing an obstruction, but with time, it's got the potential to become quite stuck. What I recommend we do now is take an x-ray of Angus's chest because I want to have a look at his esophagus and make sure that that toy is not sitting in there because if it is, uh, then we're going to have to pull it out with an endoscopy. But if it's not in the esophagus and it's moved already into his stomach, then we really have three options. Now the first one is to make him vomit and hopefully he'll bring it up the way that it went down. Option two would be to perform an endoscopy and try and pull the toy out that way. And the third option would be doing nothing and waiting and seeing if he passes it, but it could get stuck. And if it gets stuck and causes an obstruction, then that can be life-threatening. You know, it could perforate through his bowel and that can cause peritonitis. That's potentially fatal, would need emergency surgery. It's one of those things that I, I just can't guarantee which way it's going to go. So those are the options and, and you guys are going to have to decide what you want to do. Whatever you, you suggest, whatever you think is the best option. Yeah. Because yep. um, yeah, it's, not, it's not worth the risk to wait, I don't think. Yeah. Angus's future now depends on the results of x-rays and just where the toy has ended up. Hopefully. We'll get some information from it and then I'm going to try and make him vomit if the x-ray is normal and then fingers crossed that I get another one of these out. Excellent. It's brown in colour if that's of any help. Good to know. <laughs> Won't be long. Come on Angus, this way buddy. Let's go. Angus has been through so much with his epilepsy and his seizures and they've all been in and out of hospital and now he's here again with a toy stuck that could be life-threatening. We need to get this toy out very quickly for Angus's sake and for theirs. I think if we go looking for causes, for why Zaza's having problems. 
my feeling is that it begins and it ends with her supposed best friend. Aww. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris has just discovered that Zaza, the bearded dragon, shares her enclosure with a mate called Rosa. I don't see them fighting and sometimes I see her sitting on top of the other one. And, mm -hmm. You know, so I think if you sit on the, they get on the back. Yep. I think it'd look if it was that bad between them, you're not going to be doing it. Chris is now starting to suspect Rosa could be the reason Zaza's tail is getting shorter and shorter. I think Rosa walks around and goes, oh, I'm hungry, what can I eat? And sees this little thing floating around. It says that's a worm. And it moves and it fits in Rosa's mouth pretty comfortably. All it takes is one little bite from Rosa to clamp down, affect the blood supply to the tip of the tail, becomes black and then drops off. That's a shame your little mate's eating you. I'm sitting here wondering how we're finally going to crack this case, how we're going to know exactly what's happening to Zaza's tail, when I realise I'm looking at a girl who has 28 pets. She has more pets than I do. Therefore, this one's over to her. I'm going to put Lara completely in charge of this case. I want you to put this above their enclosure and mm -hmm. turn it on, OK? We're yeah. going to run that for about an hour. And we're going to see what happens when you're not around, because they won't do this when you're there. If Rosa is taking a little chunk out of Zaza, then they need to be separated. It all comes down to what we see on this camera. Let's see if that little toy is sitting in your esophagus, huh, buddy? I hope it's not. At Sash, five-year-old Angus has swallowed a soft toy. Lisa needs to find out exactly where it's lodged. Wait there. So we're taking some x-rays now of Angus to see if that fluffy toy is in his esophagus, because if it is there, it could do some real damage. That organ is really sensitive, and hopefully it's already moved into his stomach. Owners Ray and Tracy are waiting in reception. They're hoping their naughty boy doesn't have to have surgery. Angus is basically part of the family. We've had him since he was 12 weeks old. We've had him for about four, four or five years now. He's about five. He's uh, yeah, an RSPCA dog. Yeah. So, yeah, he's a bit special. OK, that's fine. I can't see any sign that that fluffy yeah. toy is in his esophagus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, it's more likely that it's moved down into his stomach, in which case we've got to make him vomit right now. If we don't get it out quickly, it could move into his intestines where it could become blocked, and that could mean surgery. You've got a waiting room full of hot chicks. These Chinese silky chickens are the pampered pets of the equally colourful Chrissy. I think the whole world needs more colour. I love colour. And, and what I do to the chickens, it doesn't hurt them. It's completely and utterly harmless. They are shampooed in Pantene, conditioned in Pantene, and then I put food colouring, which is totally harmless to them, harmless to me, and then I blow dry them. And that's how we get our little coloured chickens. I knew it was you. <laughs> well, who else does this? Who huh? else how does this? Mm, good. good to see you. you too. Now, who can I grab? Um, you can grab this one if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. Fabulous. And that one. You up the door. Chrissy's one of the clinic's colourful characters in every sense of the word. In there. In. No, wrong door. Let's go. Over the years, I've seen Chrissy for a number of problems, all to do with her pets. Here we go. Close the barn door. Now it appears the chickens are next up. I've got no idea what to expect with these chickens. What is the crisis? The crisis, Chris. I have the crisis in here. Mm -hmm. This is chook number four. 
I have this little one isolated mm -hmm. from these guys. Yep. This little one is losing weight dramatically. You can actually feel the keel bone. Yeah. And she's very sticky in her beak. Why it's sticky in her beak? And she kind of looks a little tired too. It's clear straight away, looking at the yellow chicken, this is why Chrissy is so concerned, because a chicken just shouldn't look like this. This quiet, you get worried. We're actually going to give him a meal mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. we're going to make him vomit. Lovely. Okay, because I just want to coat that toy up <laughs> so that when he does vomit it will hopefully come out come all as on, one. Yeah. And if he doesn't, then he's going to have to have an endoscopy performed. At SASH, five-year-old Angus has swallowed a soft toy. The race is on to try to locate and remove it before it causes a potentially life-threatening bowel obstruction. The x-ray showed that the soft toy is unlikely to be in his esophagus, so it's more likely that it's in his stomach. What we're going to do now is we're going to try and make Angus vomit so that the fluffy toy comes out in the easiest way possible. Now I need to feed him a big meal so that he's got something to coat that toy when he vomits it up. This is as spoiled as they come. Are you excited? There you go, Angus. That is delicious. Angus will now get a shot of apomorphine to make him vomit. Hey, bud, you're going to feel a bit sick now, and I'm really sorry about that. Here comes the drooling. There we go. This is what happens when you eat your toys. All right. You get to be sick. I'm really hoping that Angus vomits up this fluffy toy because if he doesn't, we're going to have to give him an anaesthetic and perform an endoscopy to try and pull it out. He's really not feeling well. Good, Good boy. Come on. Good on, my buddy. Oh, I'm a bit worried now because that's a lot of food and there's no toy in there. Angus has vomited a couple of times, and as I'm searching through this stinky vomit, there is no sign of pet pet, which means that Angus has to have an anaesthetic so that we can try and pull out the toy with an endoscopy. Hey, I'm so sorry. Hey, bud, we've got to get that toy out. This little one is losing weight dramatically. You can actually feel the keel bone. Yeah. And she's very sticky in her beak. Why it's sticky in her beak? At the Bondi Clinic, Chrissy is extremely concerned about her Chinese silky chicken, Goofy. She's she's really, sleeping. really lethargic yeah. and she is sleeping a lot. Whenever I look, she's got a little head in the back sleeping. I mean, she should be up and proud like these guys are. Yeah. Whereas she is very withdrawn. She has no energy. Mm. She doesn't look good. No, she doesn't. Whereas all the rest of Chrissy's chickens are all colourful and active and looking to create chaos, the yellow chicken is completely different. She's quiet, she's withdrawn, almost looks like she wants to go to sleep. It's strange to see anything to do with you being quiet. I know, I'm not coping. I'm, I, can't, I can't cope. If I lose another one, I'll be beside myself. Mm. Last week I lost one. I, mm. There were the three of them and I had a beautiful big pink one and I lost her and I'm really concerned that whatever the pink one had may have gone to this one. Sure. Chrissy is understandably worried. Little Coco, the pink chicken, died without warning. I thought she was fine and just last week I came out one morning and she'd gone to chook heaven. The thing with chickens is you normally don't see a lot wrong with them until it's, it's too late. Mm -hmm. So for her to be actually showing signs of, of weakness right now, mm. she must be pretty unwell. Yeah. I knew she was sick, but she's a whole lot sicker than I thought. So I just hope that I've got her here in time. Let's get away from her and see where we're at. Okay. Bugger lugs here. One point six kilograms. Big difference. So she's almost triple her weight. Almost triple. So she is eating as much as the others would yes, you say? Yes, absolutely, and taking fluids. Yet, despite all that, she's fading away compared to the rest. Absolutely. She does look worryingly skinny there. Yeah. Let's have a look at you. 
There are a few areas in a mouth that don't look spot on. It's all a little bit sticky and... Yeah, it's sort of got that white sticky. Mmm. It should smell great. No, it's, it's terrible, isn't it? Oh. Foul-smelling breath and mucus in the mouth could be a sign of infection. But Chris will need to do a full examination to see if there are any other symptoms. All right, let's have a little listen to her. Listening to Goofy's heart, it sounds OK. It's when I look at her breathe that I really get worried. You can see her whole body move. Yes. In an attempt to get that air in. I just fear that perhaps the infection we're seeing around her nose is actually a small part of what's going on. I worry that she may actually have an infection further down in her, in her air sac, so actually in sort of the equivalent of her lungs. Like pneumonia, like we yeah. get. Look how much she has mm. to really push and suck that air in to actually get a breath. For a chicken, that's just not normal. Yeah. Boy, and have a little sleep. At SASH, Dr. Vibeka Russell has the tricky job of trying to remove the soft toy in Angus's stomach. Hey, bud, you're going to be all right. We're going to get this out of you, hey? We're just anaesthetizing Angus now. We're going to put a camera down his esophagus, his food pipe, to try and see if that toy is in his stomach. And hopefully, we'll be able to grab it out and pull it out his mouth. Because if we can't get it out and it's in there, he's going to have to have surgery. So we're going down into the stomach now. It's not looking hopeful. I don't see. I mean, it would be pretty obvious if it was in yeah, there. Yeah, this is a fairly small ball of food, and I don't see any soft toy there, which is disappointing. Come on, Angus. It's not a tiny toy. It shouldn't be this difficult. Really. The frustration is building as the minutes tick by, and there is no sign of the stuffed toy. At the moment, Things are looking a little bit worrying, and I don't even know if the toy's in there. After more than 25 minutes, Lisa and the team are almost ready to give up and take Angus to surgery. We're looking around, and we're really not having any luck finding the toy. We're finding bits of food, bits of hairs. It's all just a big, chaotic mess in that stomach. Oh, what's oh, that? Oh, what is that? It looks a bit non-food-like. Doesn't non-food-like? I wonder if that is the tag. I think you got it, babe. Well, it's just... So we just have to go very slowly. Come on, please be there. That looks like a toy. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh! Maybe those sardines weren't such a good idea, Mark. <laughs> Well, that's a job well done, I think. That is a huge relief. We managed to get the fluffy toy out of Angus's stomach with the endoscopy, which means no surgery for Angus. And after a little bit of recovery time, he'll be home, ready to take his medication. Look how much she has to really push and suck that air in to actually get a breath. For a chicken, that's just not normal. Yeah. At the Bondi Clinic, Goofy the Chinese silky chicken is in serious trouble. An infection is taking over her tiny body, resulting in lethargy and extreme weight loss. With every breath, she burns so much energy just getting the oxygen in that sustains her that no matter how much she eats, she's never going to eat enough to replace the energy she's burning just through doing something simple as breathing. Mm -hmm. Any animal that breeds like this is a concern. You can see the effort she puts in just to get one single breath. She dips her head, she musters up all her strength, and with one big effort, sucks the air in as hard as she can. That's just one breath. She has to take thousands of those each day. It's no wonder that she is so stressed and she's lost weight. Okay. Well, we need to work out some treatment for her. Yep, and sure quickly. Do. Yeah, very quickly. With Goofy so sick and time so tight, we can't afford to choose an antibiotic that doesn't work here. 
That's why I'm going to use two, and that way I've got every chance of having success here. As well as antibiotics, Chris is also giving Goofy a worming treatment. The wormer obviously removes the chance that the worms are playing a part here, mm -hmm. but the two different antibiotics are going to try to get into her system now and kill off the bacterial infection that's really starting to affect it. So how long before I see a difference? Look, hopefully within about three to four days. Right. So okay. your big goal is to get her through the next three to four days. Okay, yep. If you can do that, then I'm confident mm -hmm. that we're going to be okay. okay. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm very happy with what Chris has done. So now we can just fingers crossed and pray. Say thank you, Chris. Thank you. Little smile there. <laughs> go home? You're all ready to go home. Come on, buddy. Later that afternoon at Sash, sheepish toy eater Angus is ready to go home. Hey, you can't live without your friend. The procedure's gone really well. Angus has recovered and now his family are here to pick him up and take Angus and Pet Pet home in time for dinner and Angus's medication. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Come on. Relieved owners Tracy and Ray are waiting in reception. We are looking forward to getting him, getting him home um, and just wait for the next episode of uh, what he gets up to. Come on, Angus. What's around the corner? Angus. Yeah, we're over here. Angus, yeah. Hello. Hello. I'm really glad that Angus is OK. He's a pretty special dog. Like They've saved his life once here before and pretty sure they've done it again this time. All right, so here is your other pet. He's been shampooed, blow-dried a little bit, had the deluxe treatment. So I've spoken to Angus and told him that he needs to be nice to his pet. To his pet. So the rest is up to you guys. I've done my vet counselling and Angus. you have to mend this relationship. What did you do with this? So we'll take Angus home now, give him a strong talking to, tell him that friends are not food, uh, and then we'll give him his drugs and, and cheese and hopefully everything will be fine. Okay, thanks again, Lisa. My pleasure. Take care. Bye, Angus. Bye, pet, bye, pet. Come on, home time. Good boy. Where are these new babies? There they are. Hello, Mum and Dad. Oh, you can settle down, it's all right. Where are these little chicks? The following day at the Australian Reptile Park, General Manager Tim Faulkner is concerned about some highly anticipated new arrivals. I know there's two chicks. I saw them early this morning. Right now they're under Dad. These tiny bundles are just six hours old. They're extremely rare bush stone curlews. They used to be pretty common and widespread throughout New South Wales and Victoria. New South Wales now, they're endangered. They're almost gone. On the central coast where I live, uh, there's six pairs. There should be hundreds. Breeding programs are now essential to the bush stone curlew's survival. But Tim suspects the latest arrivals are starving. There's a known problem with curlews in captivity, and that is that they are wonderful parents. They try and defend and protect and feed their chicks, but Something goes wrong, and lots of curly chicks die in captivity if they're left with their parents. So what I'm going to do is scatter some food around, and what I want to see is mum and dad come back, they're just there now, is come back and start and pick up. And the chicks should come along and take that from mum and dad. That's what would normally happen. After giving the adults a helping hand, Tim is desperate to see them mimicking what they do in the wild. I've not seen any of the behaviours I wanted to see. Mum and Dad have had a pick at feed, but they've not presented anything to the chicks. The chicks are hungry, they need a lot of food. Without food, the chicks will perish. I don't know what happens with curlews, I don't know why that block's there. They're wonderful parents, they're defending the chicks, they're calling and they're following them. It's just that block with feed. Tim has had to make the heartbreaking decision 
to remove the chicks for their own survival. The main concern is that if I don't do this, I could come in tomorrow and there are no chicks. I'm going to make it as quick as possible. But the protective parents aren't happy. OK, hey, settle down, guys. Tim knows they simply can't feed their babies. There we go. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Wow. And these two little curly chicks. Have you ever seen anything as beautiful as that? It's pretty sad, but it's just something that's got to happen. There is a silver lining here. What will happen now is because mum and dad don't have to rear the chicks, they'll breed again. Now, that might happen two to three times over the year, and I could end up with six chicks instead of two. Now, for a species that's endangered, that's got to be a good thing. What I want to see now that'll make me feel a little bit better is to get these chicks up the top and see them eat. It's hard to believe you could feel any tension living here, but it's time to see if my hunch is right. Your bit of dragon sounded very Good, strange. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she was feisty. Feisty All right. little one, come on in. Thank you. Now, okay. I've been looking forward to seeing what we've managed to find out. Yeah, well, I'm sure you'll be interested. Yeah. Let us take you through. Okay, thank come you. Come on, Byron. Back in Bondi, Chris is making a house visit to see if he can finally solve the mystery of Zaza's disappearing tail. All right. So, this could be the ultimate fighting ring, is it? There's the beast. So, that's Rosa over there with the yes. perfect tail. Yeah. And Zaza up here. Yep. You know, it's interesting. Have you noticed what's happened to a tail? Oh, no. Yeah. So... Hang on. There we go. Oh. So, since she was in the clear, that's actually dropped off. Yeah. Wow. Even though it hasn't been that long since I last saw Zaza, there's been a significant change. That tip of her tail has dropped off. Does it look like it's stopped doing whatever it was doing? Well, there's no other darkening of the, of the tip there. I mean, it looks pretty healthy up until that point now. Yeah. When you remember that bearded dragon tails don't grow back, it really reinforces the fact that we need to find an answer for what's happening here and find it quickly. There ain't much tail left. Chris suspects that housemate Rosa has been attacking Zaza. Today's visit is to get the proof. So hopefully, if we put it back in here, to rest up. Mm -hmm. All the evidence we need is going to be on this camera here. Great. OK, shall we have a look? Yes. Right. Up until now, Lara's been reasonably convinced this tail issue is just tail rot, whereas I think something more sinister is going on. I think Rosa is taking chomps out of Zaza's tail. The camera should tell us all. OK, there they are. Yeah. So we've got... Rose down here. Yeah. Zaza here. Mm -hmm. So well separated. Yeah. To start with, anyway. It's almost like Rosa knows that she's being watched. She keeps on looking yes. up at the camera. I know. That's so funny, isn't it? But now, Zaza's on the lookout because Rosa is now coming up. Ooh. And centimetres away from that tail now. Yeah. It's tense, isn't it? Yeah. Rosa's breathing has just increased. Mm -hmm. Zaza's just looked around. Yeah. So I just wonder if something's about to happen here. Yeah. So getting close and. Oh. Oh. Okay, that was our moment. Yeah. So. I can't believe we got it. Yeah. yeah. It's that lick. I mean. Yeah. That's her lunging with a tongue at what she sees as either being food or something that yeah. she wants to prove yeah. she's the boss of. Yeah. And the moment that licking happens, yeah. Zaza's out of there. Yeah. So yeah. I think this couple need a bit of a separation. What do you say? Sound good? Yeah. You yeah. think so? Yeah. Yeah. Because I think if Rosa keeps on licking her lips at Zaza's tail, Zaza's not going to have much of a tail left. Finally, I've got the proof. Yeah. All right, 
little mateys. Time to get weighed. Here you go, just sit in there for a minute. At the Australian Reptile Park, Tim is trying to save two tiny undernourished bush stone curlew. Who's first? Okay, you. I'll tear that back to zero. Sit down, matey. 19 grams. Every day going forward, I want them to be heavier than the previous day. The fragile newborns have to be hand reared because their parents aren't feeding them. Come here, mate. He thinks I'm mum already. That's good. When I have a look at both of them, what I feel for is once they've had a good feed, their belly puffs out and it's full, it's full of food. But on these two, I can't feel much at all and that means they've absorbed the rest of their yolk sac. So what I've done is the right thing. All right, now he's 24 grams. The big test now is to see if Tim can coax the vulnerable chicks to eat. My finger is gonna be mum or dad's beak. And if they took some feed right now, I would be the happiest man on earth. I'm gonna try a cricket. Here we go, look at the interest. Look at this. Almost, mate. Whoop. Close. Yes, that's brilliant. I don't know what happens in the aviary with mum and dad, but the food we offer, it's just not right for the parents, but it's right for the chicks. I mean, that's brilliant. Let's go for number two. Here we go. You can do it. Yes. That's the best thing I could have hoped for because it's tough taking them from mum and dad. I know I can get them to eat, but when they do it, hey mate, I'm here. When they do it, it makes it all worthwhile. I know they're gonna be all right. One more bit. Wow. All right, little guys. See you in an hour, you're coming home with me. Where do you want it? Just there, here. So they can see each other, but they can't touch each other. Yeah. All right. Chris has decided the only way to stop Rosa attacking Zaza is to separate them. Now, what's this? Stuff to put in the cage. You're to do some interior decorating. Yeah. All right, you go for it. It's not my specialty. What's your uh, style inspiration, Lara? What sort of look are you going for here? Mexican chic? <laughs> Australian outback? Just Rustic charm? What is it? A lizard cage. Lizard cage. Of course it is. <laughs> Who gets the new pad? Rosa. Really? <laughs> she's been put in exile, but she's, she's living the dream. <laughs> you call this punishment? <laughs> Shall we see if she likes it? Yeah. Okay. Now, little girl. You do the crime, you do the time. In paradise. Go on. It's kind of nice that this friendship can continue, but at a distance and with two panes of glass separating them. And there's kind of an amusing irony in the way that Zaza's tank it's higher, which means she's in charge. Well done. I think we've achieved some sort of truce here. You think? Yeah. I think everyone's going to sleep well tonight. This is a tale with a happy ending, right? Hmm? Yeah. Yep. Come on, mate. Hey, I know little guy, you doing well? Look how big you are. Six weeks later at the Australian Reptile Park, Tim's hand-reared foster chicks are thriving. You're a big boy, aren't you, mate? Yeah, you're a big fella. You're both looking good. How are your wings? They're looking good, pal. It's pretty safe to say that if I hadn't taken them as little chicks, they mightn't be alive today. And who would want that? Have a look at them. The good news is, Mum and Dad are back on another two eggs. That means the decision to take these little guys was the right one. Curlews in some parts of the country are endangered, so they'll play a pretty important little role in part of a captive breeding program. You know, they obviously can't breed together, so we'll split them up into pairs with other curlews, and maybe their chicks could actually go back to the wild. Hi, I'm Dr Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. 
If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.